Now, in the course of news gathering, we can somehow um, cross boundaries. Uh, we've talked about privacy a little bit, but now we need to really look uh, at that and, and going beyond in terms of news gathering um, and whether we're doing our job, whether we're being annoying, or whether we're actually crossing a legal line. Now, harassment um, is crossing a line that goes beyond news gathering. I've mentioned to you under privacy, um, Ron Galella, he, Ron is pictured here. Um, he was actually sued by Jackie Kennedy because he was uh, taking pictures of her everywhere she went. He was always in her face with a camera. Um, he ended up getting a restraining order against him. Um, so there is such a thing as tortoise news gathering, which basically establishes a liability for trespassing in the course of doing news gathering. Um, the, one of the cases that we can look at here is uh, the Wolfson versus Lewis case where we had a couple of reporters for Inside Edition and they were investigating the private lives of U.S. healthcare executives. Um, they started gathering video footage of these uh, this couple, the Wolfsons. They followed them around in a van with tinted windows. They did ambush interviews. Um, they used shotgun mics, telephoto lenses. The Wolfsons ended up suing under this common law tort of intrusion upon seclusion, and a judge did prohibit the inside edition reporters from engaging in any further conduct that would invade the privacy of the Wolfsons. So this balance of the First Amendment against this invasion of privacy in this case fell on the side of invasion of privacy. Um, the idea of fraud and misrepresentation, um, you know, by either uh, presenting false evidence or concealing what should have been disclosed. Um, that's also an issue where we sometimes straddle a journalistic line and journalists can be held liable when they try to obtain information using a lie. So one of the most famous cases related to this is the Food Lion versus Capital Cities. Capital Cities is ABC. Uh, Primetime Live was uh, airing a program about food handling practices. They ended up getting these reporters to go in undercover and record. Now Food Lion sues saying that it was unfair because uh, they got access by getting jobs with Food Lion and they came in and recorded them. The court decided that the producers actually had trespassed. They had permission to be in the store, but they didn't have the permission to videotape tape the footage in these areas that were not public. Um, now, an appeals court ended up overturning this because Food Lion actually failed to show that it had suffered any injury. But the, the idea being uh, that we need to really pay attention when we go undercover as to um, whether or not this is going to be legal. Now, disaster scenes, um, it's important to note that the First Amendment does not give us any special rights or uh, opportunities to go where the public is not welcome. There are states, three specifically, California, Ohio, and Oregon, have extra protection. So there are opportunities for press to get greater access. But basically, if you fail to obey police at a scene, similarly to any person in the, in the, who happens to be there, any individual, you um, actually could be violating laws. Covert recording is um, an area where uh, journalists can fairly easily get into some trouble, so it's important to know the law. We have 38 states and the District of Columbia that have what's called one-party consent, and that means only one person in a conversation needs to know they're being recorded. So if I'm doing an interview with you, I'm recording it, I know it, you don't know we're being recorded, that's legal in those states. It is illegal in 12 states, which have what's called all-party consent. Um, I've listed them for you here, um, so in that case, before you start recording, you need to say, I'd like to record you, um, can I have your permission? And then the person either does or does not give your permission. Now, there's often a question if it's the originating state or the destination state whose law you follow, um, I would always fall on the side of caution. So if I'm calling someone in California, um, I'm certainly gonna make sure that I'm gonna ask whether or not to record them. And truthfully, good journalistic practice um, from an integrity standpoint is to always ask before you record people. Um, there was a case uh, that helps us identify uh, what to do here. Uh, Kearney versus Solomon Smith Barney in, in 2006. In this case, the plaintiff, uh, Kearney, said that Solomon Smith Barney recorded conversations between its employees in Georgia and plaintiffs in California without consent. Um, now, a Superior Court in San Francisco dismisses the complaint saying that the calls were um, subject to a lawful under Georgia's one-party state, and it was upheld by the California Court of Appeals. But the Supreme Court said that the invasion of privacy Act applies even when one party of the conversation is outside of California. So this legal case says specifically that if you're recording someone in the state of California, California law applies. Of course, if you don't tell anyone that they're being recorded, um, that can violate the Wiretap Act. So it's important um, that you be very careful around this one. 
Um, and then remember the Bartnicki versus Hopper case as it relates to um, ob obtaining, as, as a news source, obtaining information that's been recorded that may violate this, um, just so we can remember exactly what the court has outlined for us. Now, recording in public is um, something that we do quite often. We are legally protected from recording audio that takes place in public, uh, shooting photos of things that take place in public. Things that you can easily see or hear on, in the public space is certainly open for uh, chronicling. Now, uh, often, uh, as, a, as a reporter, I certainly had police tell me they, uh, that I'm not allowed to be taking photos, I'm not allowed to be recording things. Um, this has been a big issue, uh, certainly as it relates to recent issues of, of uh, uh, police versus um, individuals. But what is important to note is this case, Glick versus Kunif from 2011, actually outlines specifically what your rights are. Simon Glick was filming with his cell phone, Boston officers making an arrest. He felt that it could be police brutality. He was actually charged with wiretapping because he was recording people um, who, were, and he was not a party to the conversation. Um, now the court had recognized that videotaping of public officials was an exercise of First Amendment liberty. Um, and this this isn't just limited to reporters. This is limited to any, this is, anyone who's out there. So um, it actually found that Glick had a constitutional right to videotape a public official in a public space.